Right, so in this podcast, we're going to look at the tools in the tool store, some of the tools. Um, the profile we're going to use is the first one at the board. Okay, so we've, we've seen the main menu one in our last podcast. The next one down from this is a thing called Desktop Annotate. And when you click that, it goes to your desktop, whichever program you're working on. Um, so at the minute, I've got it on our Blackboard site. And you can then click on any tool and start using it over the top of that software. Um, so let's say if I want to go to the highlighter and I want to highlight across there, I can do that and so on. Um, I can bring up the browser using Control and B, but do you notice it hasn't taken any of the actual pages of the software in the background. Um, all you've got is the annotations that you've made on that. So if you come to print that out, that's not going to have any of the Blackboard page that I've got there. It's almost like putting an, uh, an acetate over the top of whatever you're using, writing on the acetate, and then when you come to print out, you're just printing out the acetate. Okay. So the next one down from that, uh, across from that, sorry, is desktop tools. A similar thing, when you click on that, you notice your toolbar goes and you just have this little icon there. So you can work around, this is now a live desktop, I can click around on it but I could use any of these tools at any points. So for example, there's a camera tool there and I could take a snapshot of an area, for example. So let's say if you want to take the, the staff directory search box here, I can click on that and it'll take an image and send it to my flip chart. So if I return to my flip charts here, here is that graphic that we've taken the image of. And so when we now look in the browser, you can see the graphic is there. So if we were to do any annotations over the top of this and then come to print it out, it's actually going to print out as well, the, the background bit too. So that's the desktop tools. These two are previous and next page. So we can move backwards and forwards in our presentation. And you can see here, if we start on that page and move forward, we can see the black line moving down. And the same there. These two icons are for voting, if you have active vote or active expression. So this would be to start the flip chart vote, and this would be on a pre-prepared question that you've set up um, beforehand. You can also use this express poll to get very quick polls from your class. You don't have to have set this up beforehand. So I could I could type out a question or write out a question on here and I could then say, right, I want a multiple choice and I want four possible answers and I want two responses from them. And click on this and it's saying there's no hardware connected at the minute. But if we had the hardware connected, that would then do a vote. And you can do all sorts of things. You can do sort and order and yes and no, for true and false, all different things there. Okay, so when I get down into our main tool area, which is down here, we have our marquee select tool, which is the standard when you use just for selecting things and moving things around. We've got our pen tool. So we can, right away using our pen tool, we can change the color by clicking on any of these colors here. And we can change the width by sliding this slider. And there's also preset widths here. So I can click on that width and that's the preset one. What we can also do is use our marquee select tool, select one of our bits of ink, and then change the color afterwards. Okay, we've got the highlighter pen here. So you can pick a color and highlight over the top of something. Obviously the difference between the highlighter pen and the ordinary pen is that if I cho choose the ordinary pen and go yellow, that would write over the top of that, whereas the highlighter you can see everything coming through. Um, the eraser tool basically does as you think it would do. It will erase any annotations. It won't erase any text you've typed in, but it will erase any annotations you've done with the pen. The fill tool, if we draw a shape 
that has a point on it there we can go to the fill tool and choose a color and color that area in we've got the shapes down here so we can click on there and we get a new toolbar appearing down the right here so we can choose any of these shapes you can choose a color for the shape and you can draw the shape like so Okay. What I'm going to do is go into a new page for to show you how these connectors work, and these can work between shapes. So what I'm going to do here is draw a rectangle at the top, and we shall have a pentagon there, and a triangle there. With the connectors, what I can do is set relationships between these. So if I, you've got to hover until you get the little squares coming up click on that and drag my line until the same thing happens above the triangle here and now those two areas are connected and I'll do the same thing here and I'll connect those two together like that now when I choose the arrow tool and move this around you'll see the connection stays in place so that relationship's always there so it's great for things like organizational maps and flowchart diagrams, etc. Really good for that. The two icons down here beneath that are just your browsers. So you've got your page browser, which you've seen already here, and you've got your resource browser, which is the same as the resource library in Active Studio. So I could go to here and click shared images, and I could take an image across from the shared library. You get your spray bottle tool which is the same as it was in Active Studio. You can click on that and clear any annotations. So if I have some writing on here, and I choose annotations, it's only going to clear the annotations. If I clear the objects, it's going to keep the annotations and clear the objects. If I had a grid on it, we clear the grid, and the same with the background, or I can just clear the whole page. But either you've seen me using these, you've got undo and redo. Um, and the last one here is to reset the page. The reset the page is extremely useful when you've set up containment, for example. You could have the slide set up, save it, and then you can run the containment. And then if you want to reset it again, click the reset button and it'll go back to the start. So that's your main tools that you've got in your tool store. Um, I really do advise having a click and a play around. Um, the one area I've missed off there is this one, is the tools button and you'll notice this has got really all the tools that we've used plus a few extras you've got for example all the different mass tools there you've got spotlights, reveal tool all these sort of things so have a real play around because it's the best way to learn them is just by clicking on them and seeing what they do um, you're not going to be able to break it um, and just spend the time learning and that's the end of our second podcast.